Today we're going to be talking about, you know, radio frequency ablation of the hip. Um, kind of going to be a real quick overview here. We're going to show you the procedures, the target areas that we're going to be uh, ablating. Um, but first, to start off, I want to talk about um, the specific large volume ablation um, needles that we're going to be using. Unlike the conventional or standard um, ablation needles that are giving us anywhere about 170 millimeters cubed or cubic millimeters, we're doing large volume, um, anywhere from 470 up to 600 cubic millimeters of um, ablation size. And uh, the unique feature of this, and I don't know if we can um, show in here on the Avenos needle, what we're looking at trying to do is, you know, it's a, instead of being along the longitudinal axis of the needle, we have a kind of a, a sphere or elliptical shape that expends about two to four millimeters distal to the tip here. So it extends out past the tip in a sphere and we get a larger ablation size. So when we cover the nerve in these targets, we're getting uh, much more reliable resorts or results instead of just having to be along the nerve, we can reliably go down and ablate the nerves that we need to. So when we're talking about the hip here, we, you know, I already have it set up here, but you know, just proper setup, we're gonna get the optrator foramens lined up and symmetrical. What we're gonna do, we're gonna target both the articular branches of the femoral and the obturator nerves. And so first I'm gonna show you the target for the femoral, we're gonna go up to the, um, here, take a shot there. Okay, we're gonna start out lateral a little bit. We're gonna go right up there on the superior acetabulum. We start out lateral, enter here. We're gonna to go to the 12 o'clock position. We're just gonna walk our way down, picture. Kind of get to the bone, picture there. A little bit back. We're gonna dock right at the 12 o'clock position. And that's gonna get that picture right there. We're gonna get that 12 o'clock position right there for the femoral articular branch. Now what we wanna do, once we have our needle in position, we're gonna stimulate for motor and sensory here. Pull it back a little bit. That's a little bit further than I really want it to be. Picture there. We're gonna get away from the articular surface just on that superior acetabulum. Picture, right there. And what we're doing there is we're gonna stimulate for motor, you know, because we are doing the articular branch of the femoral nerve, but we don't want to get any motor involvement with the femoral, femoral nerve. As we know, it innervates the quadriceps and we're in a world of hurt if we ablate that. And so the benefit with this needle here, the Avenos needle, it's using a cooled system here to keep the temperature of the needle tip at 60 degrees, but the ablation time around the lesion gets up to 80 to 85 degrees Celsius. And that's what we're looking at um, burning. One of the unique things, once you're in position here, we'll take the stylet out. We'll put our probe in, which is here. We've got our two access ports that hook up to the, the generator and it's gonna keep the tip at a cooler temperature, but the surrounding surface area is gonna to get to that 80 to 85 degrees Celsius is what we're looking for. The unique feature here is that you have the side port. So once you get the probe in, you do your motor testing, then you can inject your you know, lidocaine, your local anesthetic of choice here to kind of numb it up, give them a little bit of relief before we run the energy cycle. And so typically for the femoral, I'll burn here at the 12 o'clock and I'll redirect back and come back more on this side to like the 11 o'clock picture there. A little bit further in. Picture there. Picture. Right there. And I'll hit both of those just, you know, really to guarantee, because when I'm doing this procedure, I'm having two needles. When we go down here and show you the obturator, um, I'm usually running them at the same time and redirecting. Now, one of the things I want to point out here is that really the area that we want to pay attention to as far as safety is avoiding the femoral uh, vascular bundle. You know, the femoral, you know, nerve artery and vein, picture there, picture here. It's really running about along here, about 20% on the femoral head. One more picture. And so a little bit more medial to that. It's running along that trajectory there. And so when we're targeting the obturator nerve down here um, on the ischium, we wanna pay close attention to avoid that because we don't wanna uh, 
hit that cause a hematoma. And there's a couple ways to do it. You have the option of doing fluoro palpating first. You know, it's very reliable. You can palpate the femoral artery there. You fill it, go about two centimeters lateral, and that's your entry point. You can also have the option of using ultrasound. Confirm where that uh, artery and vein are and just direct your needle under it. Now we know that, that, that the, the femoral artery is about one to three centimeters below the, the surface area, depending on body habit. So when I'm doing this, you know, kind of look at that uh, femoral head. I'm gonna start a little bit out lateral over here, you know, I'm palpating, picture there. There's two ways to do it. Come in a little bit out lateral, you palpate, you feel it, you know it's running under there. Once you enter here and you go a little bit deeper, you're under that femoral artery and uh, vein and you're avoiding it. And so we can go in here. Picture there. We're gonna, picture. So as he advances to the anterior portion of the ischium, the femoral artery always, always, always lies in the medial 20% of the femoral head. It lies across, going from some superior medial to inferior lateral. So if my right fem femoral artery is here, it goes like this, across the medial 20% of the femoral head. It doesn't matter whether you're thin, uh, morbidly obese, it's always there. And so for those of us who have done quite a bit of angiography and you stick the femoral artery purposely, it's one of those things that God put that artery there so you could stick it under fluoro and have access to their vascular system. It's also one of those things, you put it there so you guys can avoid that while you're doing uh, hip radiofrequency ablation. So yeah, this is our you know first uh, uh, spot for our lesion for the our, uh, articular bench of the obturator nerve. I usually will do two, two lesions here um, and adjust it a little bit more uh, medial, right? Get to the bottom of the teardrop, the incisors up right there. Um, and so I'll burn there and then we'll come back and the incisors is about one centimeter, a little bit higher anterior or ventral to the ischium right there. And so you have to walk it up. And so we'll guide it back and pull, shoot a picture there. And we'll walk it up, picture there, along the teardrop, the inside shirt right there, picture. One more. A little bit more, right there. And you can feel it because it is more anterior. You just feel it and walk it up. Picture. Right there. And we're going to burn right on that picture. Just keep walking it up. Picture. Right there. You can tell, like in thin patients, you got to get it right on top. Picture. So here's the teardrop. Right there. Right. And we're going to dock there, right on that teardrop. And this is the junction Picture. of the acetabulum, superior pubic ramus, the confluence of the Picture. inferior pubic ramus, right there. the medial acetabulum. We're going to hit, and usually I'll be running two needles here, and I'll hit the incisura and the ischium right there and burn that at the same time I'm doing the uh, superior the femoral branch. The other option to avoid the femoral blunder is coming more medial and walking up along the issue. Picture there, picture here. Get more medial, picture. Right here, going in, going down, Picture, picture there, and walking our way up to void the moral artery in, in vein and walking it up to the incisure. Picture. Right there. So he's shown you ablation zones here, inframedial, inferolateral portion of the teardrop, 
And this will be about one and a half centimeters more ventral than down here. And then we're going to ablate all the way across the ischium, kind of in a carpet bombing technique, to get all the uh, capsular branches of the obturator nerve. That's what this is ablating. An ablation zone is 12 o'clock, ablation zone at 11 o'clock to get articular branches of the femoral nerve. And by doing this, uh, based on what the data that we have, we have a, about an 80% response rate on the average. Your pain reduction will be around 40 to 45 points on the VAS. Corresponding improvements in function, and it appears to be durable to about two years. So yeah, again, we're gonna you know stimulate, test for motor stimulation, make sure we're not getting any muscle fiber twitching in the lower extremity, and we're gonna you know we're burning at 60 degrees Celsius for uh, two minutes and 30 seconds for each lesion time there to get that very large volume. Make sure we ablate uh, a large segment of that nerve to get the pain relief we're looking for. Would you make a comment, Dr. Phillips, on the uh, ablation zone size and, and why that could be important? Okay. Uh, so the ablation zone is, a, as you mentioned, is about 600 cubic millimeters, and there's variability. So if you look at the map of where, if you take a cadaver and dissect where their articular branches are, they're very variable. Is it not working? They're very variable. So the size is incredibly important to get a large volume of ablation to compensate for that variability. So the large, large volume ablation zones, this is Cool RF, some of the multi tine units that we have that are out now uh, are the Nimbus needle or the d needle, for example. Uh, these are also large ablation volumes. And this is uh, very much an advantage when you're looking at ablation, RF ablation of joints, major joints, knee, hip, shoulder, uh, very much uh, an, an advantage to be able to effectively ablate that whole real estate. I just now was able to hear you, Dr. Bill. I didn't catch any of that last part. Yeah, no problem. Were there any questions or anything? Yeah, so we'll open up to, that's our ablation of the hip, and we do at least a moderate amount of this. We do it uh, pre-op, we do it post-op. You can do it uh, after a total hip, uh, and this also applies to the knee. About 2% uh, of people have persistent pain after hip replacement, about 15% after knee replacement. And so this is a, a technique that once you start doing it, it's a consistent large volume. One of the other things, hey, Dan, one of the other things that you have to take into consideration is use copious amounts of local anesthetic when ablating, ablating sensory nerves to the joint is painful. So keep in mind, you may have to give more aggressive MAC. You may have to do deep sedation, copious amounts of local anesthetic. So we'll open up the questions or comments. Yes. Typically four. So we'll ablate, I'll ablate infra, for the teardrop, inframedial, infralateral, and across the, the bottom of the ischium, we I typically will re require four ablations. So two needles down there, one at the teardrop, one over the femoral head at the acetabulum, roof of the supraacetabular ilium. And so t one needle there and two ablations, two ablations, and then uh, four total ablations with two needles at the bottom. And so most of this will go 80 for 90 with conventional RF. With this, uh, he mentioned the, the ablation is two minutes and 30 seconds. It's actually 245 with a 15 minute ramp time. Uh, this is also requires water. So the, the, the generator that you have will have water tanks on either side, and this is what circulates the water through the distal tip. This is why it's called cool radio frequency. So less charring increases the ablation zone. So that's why you get high volume. And the needle he was using with the uh, five millimeter active tip is, uh, is a 600 cubic millimeter burn zone. Yes. <coughs> yeah, so it's really easy in the hip. So the femoral nerve, L2 through L4. Yeah, this is one of the common mimickers. So the people with hip pain and, and back pain, if you, you can tell, if you, you meet somebody that says, I can tell you definitely every time, whether if somebody has hip or back pain, if it's the hip or it's the back every time, they haven't seen enough hip or back pain. But the L2 through L4 also innervates the quadriceps. So if you, if you do motor testing, you will see an unmistakable thump in the quadriceps. And if you miss that, 
and you ablate it, we can't be friends anymore. <laughs> so <clears throat> it's pretty, it's pretty obvious and, and motor testing. And uh, you'd have to be, you kind of have to be fairly far off because the neurovascular bundle also runs exactly the same as what I showed you. It's a medial 20% of the femoral head. It runs right there and it goes like this. That is a neurovascular bundle. That's where the femoral artery and femoral nerve run. Femoral vein, nobody really cares about the poor femoral vein because you can stick through it and it's all, it doesn't matter. You know, sometimes we'll do it on purpose just to get blood out of it. But the femoral nerve, if, if you uh, anesthetize that, if you, for example, use lidocaine and you anesthetize this before your rate of frequency ablation, you use copious amounts of anesthetic, if you miss, and you get along the neurovascular bundle that runs here, you will give that person a motor block. They will not be able to use their quadriceps, which means they can't walk, which means that you're going to be there for a while monitoring them until the anesthetic wears off. Recorded. So if you don't mind uh, asking the question in the microphone so that people at home can hear this. Yeah, sure. Uh, is this technique meant to prolong someone's native joint, or is this kind of an adjunct to someone who's already had a replacement? Yes. So, as I mentioned, some of the high volume total joint uh, adult recon guys in our area use this even pre op for recovery. So, people that are uh, morbidly obese, for example, have a lot of comorbidities, are challenged in their mobility, um, or just maybe need a little extra help. Maybe the amount of chronic narcotics or opioid induced hyperalgesia use this before. Uh, you can use it after a failed uh, total hip arthroplasty, but mainly this is done to avoid people with too many comorbidities, don't want to have surgery, um, whatever other reason can't have surgery. So this is, a, this is something that will typically buy you a couple of years, will extend the, the, the relief uh, after you fail and this series goes, you know, conservative treatments, medications, injections, <clears throat> then after injections, whether it be steroids or visceral supplementation, then you go to RF ablation. Thank you.